So let's talk about F202, which is Wireshark. This is not Autopsy. Wireshark is the tool you use to analyze network traffic, and you can install it on any operating system. So I'm going to run it directly on my Mac. You don't need a virtual machine or anything. So you just download the evidence file and unzip it, which uh, I guess I'll do it again because I did it on the Windows machine. It's already unzip it here. There's a folder. All right. So in here, there are some log files. And for some reason, they put the appendix log file, but they're not log files. They are actually Wireshark. So we're going to open rhino.log in Wireshark. So install Wireshark on whatever machine you're using. And then you can open rhino.log. So I can do file open and go to case one rhino.log. And I don't care about your updates. All right, so now you see the network traffic. The way Wireshark works is the top pane gives you a summary of every packet with a little description. The middle pane gives you details broken up by OSI model layers, and the bottom shows you raw hex values of the data there. So you can see various data here, and in the very bottom, it'll tell you how big it is. There are 6,557 packets. So looking through them one by one is not a very practical way to deal with them. That's why it's good to learn some of the more advanced features of Wireshark. So um, you open this thing. So the first thing we're going to do is find Telnet packets. We filter by Telnet. And then I'm going to export them. So let's go back to Wireshark. You can put a display filter here to filter for a certain type of traffic. And Telnet is an unencrypted protocol. Now, here, there are 6,557 6, packets, but only 568 displayed, because only 568 of them were Telnet. And I want to export this into a separate file. That's one way to analyze things. It's a way I like to do it. So I'll export, um, I think, specified packets. I want to export the displayed 568. OK. And I'm going to call that, um, I think, Telnet uh, with a file name of Telnet. Good. All right. Telnet. Save. All right. Telnet is the protocol you use to control things through the command line. So the original one would send data key presses one at a time over the network. And it was originally intended to just go through a wire from your terminal to the computer. But then the internet came out, so they ported it over TCP, and it sends all your key presses, but it doesn't encrypt anything. So it's really dangerous. SSH is the modern replacement that encrypts things. But a lot of people continue to use Telnet anyway, even though it's very dangerous. And these guys did. Good? All right, so now I've saved the Telnet package. And now I'm going to find FTP packets and save them the same way. So I go up here. FTP is a similar ancient file transfer program, which also doesn't encrypt anything. So both of these should really not be used anymore, but people do. And so here's FTP data. So I'm going to save that the same way. Export specified packets. Again, just the displayed packets. Call it FTP. And then this FTP data just includes the login and requests. It doesn't include, the, so here's a request to send up a rhino.jpg to some server, but the actual contents of the JPEG will not be in the FTP packets. They will be in FTP data packets. So, um, all right, we'll use, get them later. So now we examine the Telnet traffic. So we can just close this one and get the other file that has only that traffic. So file open. Uh, I'm in the right folder. Here's the Telnet I just created. All right. And this filter is filtering for FTP, so I can't see anything. I have to clear that filter. Now I see the Telnet data. Now, you could read the packets one by one, but there's a much better way to do it, which is following the TCP stream. So um, here you can tell from the time what's going on. Here's zero seconds. Here's fractions of a second. There's a whole stream of data here. If you right-click, follow, TCP stream, then you see what the user saw. It gets rid of all the um, addresses and protocol, and so the red is like the server and the blue is the user. So the server said login and the user typed GNOME, and this is common at certain steps in an old-fashioned Telnet login. You send a G and the server echoes the G back, so you see every letter twice, once from the user and once from the server. Then there's a password, and they didn't get in this time. So they have to try logging in again. They got in this time. So now you can see what they did. You can see they, they did a directory of files, and they're going to upload or download a file or something. So you can see what they're doing in this friendly view. It's really quite helpful. So um, 
Now, you can move to the next stream. This is one stream of data, and you can sort of tell from the time. They did something around time zero, then there was a gap of three seconds, and they did some more. Then there was a gap in around nine or 10 seconds, they did something else. So there were multiple sessions here. And you can right click one of those and follow the stream, or you can just hit this arrow down here to go to the next stream. Here's the first TCP stream. Here's the next one. Looks like they tried to log in and they couldn't get in. Here's another stream. Looks like they got in this time and did something. So there's, there's several streams of data, a total of three streams here showing different things happening. And this is why I made a separate file. If you took the original file, there'd be all kinds of other streams of all kinds of other protocols. By saving just the telnet, I can click right through these and all the streams are using the same protocol. It makes it easier to examine them. So there are some, uh, there's a flag defined by hunting through those streams. And then um, the same thing with the FTP traffic. You read the FTP traffic, you view the streams and you'll find various streams of data and you'll find a file name that's done here. And then for extra credit, you can get the images from the FTP data traffic. Go back and filter for FTP data. Those will be the actual bytes that can produce the files and you can find it here. So if you examine the stream now, you'll see just binary data. And if you examine it in its original default view, it tries to show it to you as text. So there's unprintable characters and near the start there's JFIF. That's a JPEG file. A JPEG file has a mark here, and then it has metadata like Photoshop and so on. That's the metadata we're talking about that stores the uh, brand of the camera and often the, the uh, GPS coordinates and other things can be stored in JPEGs. So this is an image. This is what it looks like in the default view. And you can recover the image from Wireshark by changing it to raw down here and then hitting save as. And it's raw will display it as just raw hexadecimal data. And you can notice, by the way, the FFD8, every JPEG starts with FFD8 and it ends with FFD9. That's how file carving works. That's how it reconstructs from unallocated files. It finds a block that starts with FFD8 and then it goes until it finds an FFD9 and that calls that a JPEG. So this is the thing. You can save it. With it, and then you can open it in an image viewer and see what it is. So you can reconstruct the files entirely from the network traffic and that you'll find uh, various more flags to find there. So that's uh, the use of Wireshark for simple forensics and uh, that's what I wanted to show you. Let me stop this recording.